Hello, MacFest. How's everybody doing? Yeah. Oh, I love the energy of this audience already. Hi, my name is Ali Sprinkles. I am the panelist for my little show here. It has a lot of names, hopefully it'll, there it is. It has a lot of names because I couldn't come up with just one. Uh, so this panel on guidebook is listed as Project Incomplete, Embracing Imperfection, or Work in Projects, a Disaster Comedy. And while working on this exact screen, I came up with a third name based off of those other two names. I am here to talk to you about projects. About not making projects and how it's kind of messed me up a little bit. To preface, uh, I am up here today because I wanted to do something of a little bit of uh, improvisational theater. Uh, in high school, I was a little bit of a theater nerd. Uh, and then I transitioned, and I didn't do theater again uh, after high school. So I'm here right now, and I'm, I don't know, I'm just kind of winging it up here, I'm going to be honest. This was entirely improvisational. I tried writing a script like three different times. Uh, if you can tell, it didn't really work out. <laughs> uh, but to start off with, uh, I am going to get the possibly annoying, uh, possibly heartwarming stuff out of the way first. Uh, I am transgender, which means that I am a walking, talking, unfinished project. It also means that some people on the political spectrum hate me for, um, what was it? Being really good at sports? I'm a theater nerd. I don't think that really applies to me. I've never liked sports anyways. Uh, that out of the way. I just want to get that little joke out of the way. I thought of it like last night. Um, <laughs> growing up, my mom would spend a lot of time in her crafts room. She would always be sewing something, knitting something, uh, I believe my family actually hand knit this bag. I think my grandmother made it for me, or rather for my mom, and then it got passed down to me. Uh, but I never really made anything tangible of my own. In high school, I used to sketch a lot. I was a really big sketch artist. In middle school, I made comics. Uh, and I always liked experimenting with art forms, which is why I'm up here today. Uh, and I always tried doing something new with digital. I, I always tried making stuff like uh, really complicated posing. Uh, like stuff like this. I made websites in middle school. Uh, speaking of which, you can scan that QR code and get brought to a website. Uh, HTTP colon slash slash deadly sprinkles dot bliv dot red. If you're asking why it's .blib.red, it's because my uh, friend actually owns the domain uh, and just kind of attached me to it. I'm in complete control here. This is my server. It's just running through that uh, website name. Uh, if we could get that off the, is it not working? Can you try, try reloading? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We're holding on. Hold on, give me a second. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm struggling with whatever. There it goes. Uh, if more people come in, I just kind of ask people in the audience to point them in the right direction, or the people who were here are here. Uh, but for the people just coming in, since I just wrapped up, I'll go ahead and let you in on a secret. If you go to Deadly Sprinkles, ending with a Z, dot bliv, dot red, you'll be brought to a website with a, ooh, sorry, with a blue and red grid. Uh, if you tap anywhere on that grid, you will spawn little circles on the screen that'll disappear after about five seconds and they're completely randomized. It's just something to do in case I'm up here boring you, or if you just kind of want to have fun while also watching me. Uh, <laughs> I actually fully intended for there to be a lot more features on this website. Uh, I was programming it uh, at home a week before MacFest. I was programming it on the airplane on my way to MacFest, uh, which I have a story about in just a moment. Uh, I was programming it in the hotel room minutes ago where we ran into a really annoying bug where tapping on the screen wouldn't make anything appear. We got that fixed right before the panel, thankfully. <laughs> Thank you to my friend in the front row here uh, for helping me debug. Everybody here in the front row here is awesome. <laughs> 
but to get back on track, uh, it also seems like airlines are an unfinished project because my luggage uh, took about two days to get to me. Uh, the, the flight attendants uh, got really antsy because there was a delay in Texas because there was snow and I need to move that around a little bit. Sorry about that. Uh, if you could get up here and like find a way to make the settings happen. Ignore me. Pretend I'm not here. Ignore him. He's fine. <laughs> um, no, no, we're fine. We're fine. That, that's just been open. Uh, but yeah, no, my luggage took about two days to arrive for me uh, because there was snow in Texas that nobody was really expecting. Uh, and the flight attendants were really antsy about it and looked at my bag that had never gotten claimed before and said, that needs to be claimed. Uh, so it got stuck in Texas for a while. Uh, the entire joke there is that airlines are an unfinished project. Uh, moving on. I really wanted to do something physical uh, for my Halloween costume this year because my mom is always making crafts and my grandmother, who I think made this bag, is always making crafts. So I tried making a craft. If some of you were around the merch hall, you might have seen somebody in a lot of purple wearing a pink and white hat. That was me. I was cosplaying as Vivian from uh, Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door. Yeah, there it is. Uh, I actually was inspired by my mom, who is always making me hats. Uh, thank you. And I thought, I can't find the right hat that's pink and white striped. So I figured I'd make my own. And it's currently a little funny looking. <laughs> but it worked as the witch's hat that I needed. Uh, <laughs> it worked as the witch's hat that I needed for Halloween. It's, it's got a lot of charm to it. There's like visible stitching and stuff, but I really like how it came out. Uh, but, sorry. <laughs> I just TF2 ended up in here. Uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to finish it before uh, MacFest happened, so I had like the fully finished hat for my cosplay. Uh, and that didn't happen because I forgot where my sewing equipment was for so long. If you can't tell, there's a little bit of a running theme here. Uh, I was never diagnosed, but it is widely believed by all of my friends and my family that I am uh, either autistic, have ADHD, or both. Uh, and it's been a long time since I've actually completed a project. I completed this one technically, but I keep trying to make projects and they never really pan out. And that kind of came to, the head, to a head at the end of high school where I was fed up with making websites. I was done making websites. I made a website for a project. I don't remember how long ago. Uh, and I, I was just kind of done with it. Uh, I wanted to make a game. And my senior capstone project was coming up, which was this huge uh, project that my high school set up where uh, everybody was gonna make a poster board, like a portfolio kind of. Sorry about that. Uh, like a portfolio, like a portfolio kind of, it's the P's. Uh, where everybody would show off what they made, what they wanna do with their life. I decided that I wanted to make a full game and all that came out of it was a half-baked visual novel about uh, somebody working at a coffee shop that they really didn't like. Uh, and then the game Coffee Talk came out about a year or two later and ground me into the dust. <laughs> uh, I really wanted to make a lot of things into full products, like my idea for an indie game about a boy who loses both of his arms in an accident and gets them replaced by his kid sister with robotic arms that have grappling abilities, and then about 10 game developers had the same idea at the same time and got all of their games finished before I could. Uh, it's just kind of a comedy of errors at that point where I, I make a project and I go crazy. And I lose track of the project and what I want to do with it. And 
the, the project that I've been rolling around in my head for so long, I still want to make it. I love games with grappling hooks. Have you seen Spider-Man on the PS4 and PS5? Uh, I've loved the concept of grapple hooks and everything, and I, I made like an engine and everything, and it just never really came to fruition. And everything just kind of moved on without me. It happens. Uh, it never got me to stop, though. I still tried, and I got here. I made this website. I keep circling back around to it. I know, it's getting a little annoying at this part. Uh, I wouldn't call this a complete project, though. And it's, it's a series of going through, trying to make products, and then not being good enough for me. It's, I get into my own head a lot. I'm forgetting the point. <laughs> Example, uh, I get into my own head a lot and it's, it's always like a downward spiral for me. Uh, I, I've wanted to make games ever since I was a kid. It's just never really panned out. Has anybody else started a project and not really have it pan out? Yeah, I, there's a lot of hands. How many of you were gifted in high school? There it goes. How's that burnout treating ya? Yeah. It sucks, I know it does, I was there too. Uh, it's never gotten me to stop trying though. I, I, growing up I always had these huge expectations placed on me. I needed to get A's in my classes. If I got a B, it didn't really only ruin me, it would also stress out my mom, who I love dearly. Again, hats all the time, very sweet. Uh, it's the only thing I can say about her? Wow. <laughs> uh, it's just, I've, I've always struggled with seeing other people doing everything that I want to do, and then them not, not them, but me not being able to like live up to my own standards. Kind of what happened with this, uh, alongside the entire polling uh, side mode, I really wanted to end this panel off. I'm not ending it yet. I just really wanted to end this panel off with like a collaborative drawing effort. I wanted to make like a faux Jackbox game, but I kept getting distracted and I kept getting in my own way. Uh, and it drives me crazy. Uh, I don't know, I'm running out of things to say. You had something that you proposed to me. Uh, uh, wait, wait, hold on a second. Do you want me to wait for you? I can, I can still fill time. <laughs> I mean, you'd be waiting for nothing. I am, I'm just sitting here. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> 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 I, did not realize how difficult that this panel would be, <laughs> but I'm gonna be up here anyway. Uh, because I, I overset boundaries a lot uh, for myself, not with anybody else, uh, but I, I got curious because I went to MacFest 2022 and I did a panel with uh, my friends and I where I programmed another client uh, in, I think, C-sharp for a flash game preservation uh, project. It was called Project OML, and I'm curious to see if there's anybody in this audience who knows what I'm talking about. I see one hand raised. I'm seeing nothing else, and that's fair because not a whole lot of people came to that, really. I'm noticing that the people who actually worked on the project also didn't raise their hands. Which is really interesting, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's entirely fair. Um, I've lost the point again. I, right, I, worked on that panel, I worked on the client for that panel until I was sleep deprived. And I fell asleep in the bathroom, not on the toilet, mind you, I fell asleep underneath the sink, which I don't remember exactly how that happened. Uh, but I made a program for MacFest 2022, 
and it was the same year that it was my first year coming to MAGFest, which was really awesome. This is my third year in a row. Uh, and every single time, I miraculously have disposable income enough to get the merch packages, which means that I get a little something, I failed to pull it out, called the Swag. If anybody knows about the Swag, uh, it's really cool. It's, it's uh, sort of a hacker, uh, hacker-ish device, we can plug it into your computer and you can program things on it. Uh, and I thought it was really cool. I looked it up and I found a uh, website for it, which led me to, oh, fair enough, uh, which led me to the MAGFest uh, Slack, the uh, communications platform for MAGFest, which is really cool. And I got to see a whole lot of people and what they were working on, and I wanted to be a part of that. I was looking through uh, their code and stuff, and I was like, this seems really cool, and I want to participate. And then I didn't, which happened twice now. I, I meant to do it for this year as well, but just nothing came of it. Uh, and I'm going to try again next year, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, but it's really cool. I want to make so many things, and I'm just not finding the way to do it. Anybody else feel like this? Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing the whole sea of hands go up. Uh, I still haven't found a way around it. I don't know if anybody else in the audience has either. I hear medication. <laughs> uh, it's just weird to me that I know all of these rules, but I don't know the tricks to using them. And I don't know. It's. It's something that I've been battling with for a long time. I'm, again, like I said at the start of this, I'm very in my own head. I think of really cool things, I try to do them, it doesn't happen. I think of really cool things, I try to do them, it doesn't happen. I think of really cool things, I try to do them, is that a dog? Nothing happens. Uh, and it's a painful cycle. Uh, but I'm trying my hardest to get through it and I wanted to make music for this panel, and that also didn't end up working out. Why are you saying uh-oh? Uh, no reason. Okay. <laughs> I, I definitely don't make music, and I definitely was not asked to uh, make something. And, and I wasn't considering that as a factor. <laughs> um, I'm losing my steam here, I'm gonna be honest. Um, my point to make is that I don't want to give up. My point to make is that I don't think that anybody should give up. Because I'm gonna keep trying, and I'm gonna keep failing, and I'm gonna keep getting back up. Hope is, I lied to you all by the way, this is nowhere near an improv comedy. It's actually kind of a tragedy that turns into like a resolute kind of story. It's weird. Uh, because I made this, I know I can make stuff. I don't know what happened here. I'm trying to do things. And if anybody else here feels like they just try and fail and try and fail and try and fail and try and fail, it's very easy to give up. It's very easy to lie down and just let it happen. Uh, this panel started uh, because I kind of needed a wake-up call for myself uh, because I was in a point in my life where I had not made anything for, I think, a year, a year and a half. Uh, so I hope that this can also be a wake-up call for some other people's, people's, ugh, for some other people. Uh, where if you have a story that you want to tell I want you to be able to tell it because everybody has a story and everybody needs an outlet. I am seeing some people start to fall asleep in the audience. So I think I need to apologize to the panelist assistant who I have in the back and I think I might need to end this panel early. Unless 
do you have something that you would like to say? I mean, I've worked on projects, allegedly. Would you like to take the microphone? Sure. All right. I'll keep this alive. Uh, hi, everyone. I was not planning to actually say anything. I was going to... Did I? Did it turn off? Am I good? I'm not good. Hold on a second. Ah, the mic here likes to tell things to me, and it's currently telling me dead battery with an exclamation point. Take one of those microphones. <laughs> Please hold. Oh, see. Is this on? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, first off, I guess I should introduce myself. Um, I was the person who was sitting on the stage uh, with a laptop in her lap. My name is, just call me CV, all right? Uh, that is my screen name. I would share my real name, but also, uh, I think it's funnier if you don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, like my friend Sprinks, Ali, one of my trusted companions, I work on a lot of projects, and they don't always pan out. They can be solo projects, they can be group projects. I have projects right now, in like on my desk, in my computer, and I'm not working on them. I'm s standing on a stage instead. It is almost 9 a.m., 9 a.m., 9 p.m., oh wow. <laughs> yeah, you could see, I've gotten to that part of the night where I cannot figure out day from night. Um, <laughs> but, well, I didn't live Springs' life. I was not a theater nerd. I'm not trans. I'm very much cis. Um, that being said, even with different lifestyles, you tend to run into the same roadblocks, the same problems. Um, in terms of creative work, I don't code. Uh, coding to me looks like spaghetti, which would be a great comparison if I was actually bad at cooking. I'm an excellent cook. I will have you know that. <laughs> I can cook a mean steak with my eyes closed, I'm just saying. But, yeah, for me, there's a different set of skills that are just as inaccessible. At least that's how it feels to me. Could I learn them? I mean, probably. There are so many resources nowadays online, although whether or not they're bunk or whether they're actually truthful can be hard to say. There, there's a lot of trash on the internet, I'm just saying. Be careful with what you search. That being said, um... I have not been diagnosed either, but my friends have always listened to me talk at points and just given me what I like to term as the stare, which is effectively, you should talk to a doctor about this. <laughs> <laughs> right, I mean, it's, it's most likely ADHD or something adjacent to that. I have struggled a lot with executive dysfunction. I assume, has anyone else in the audience figured that out? I haven't figured it out. I saw hands go down as soon as I asked if you'd figured it out. That's a mood, me too, honestly. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it's been a struggle for me, both academically and creatively. I think probably my lowest point was you remember that uh, funny little thing that started up I'd say three years ago, that uh, teensy little thing, might not have heard of it, called the pandemic, <laughs> COVID. Now, I was in, I was very lucky. I got out of high school before everything uh, closed, essentially. Unfortunately, that meant I started college. And it, when you're in your first year of college, higher education, trying to figure out what you wanna do, struggling with your core classes too, because they don't feel attached to your major at all, and suddenly they tell you, hey, pack it up, go home. All of your classes are online now and it's up to you to figure out how to structure your schedule. Uh, to a normal person, it's probably something like, oh, okay, uh, let's go ahead and make a schedule. I'm gonna chip away at this every day. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh-oh is, <the, laughs> is about the reaction I get here. It's, ah. Uh, yeah, I did not do that. I was not smart about it. Not for lack of trying, mind you, or for lack of wanting. I think actually there's probably a commonly shared feeling there where when you're not doing something, it's not necessarily that you don't want to do it, right? Everyone wants something, everyone wants to do something, learn something, be somewhere. 
but it's also a lot of work and it feels overwhelming and it'd be so much easier to just not do it and, oh, hey, look at this Twitter post. Ooh, ooh, I think I got a call. I'm joking. <laughs> but yeah, there's life keeps happening around you, circumstances pop up, maybe, I don't know, your car got sideswiped, you gotta figure out how to buff that out, auto insurance, or you're paying off student loans. I know I'm paying off student loans. Oi, what, what a mess, right? Regardless, yeah, it can be hard to get started when there's so many things you already need to keep doing. And that's a weight that just follows you around. It's a ball and chain for sure. Now, uh, sorry, I'm probably not gonna be standing the entire time. Uh, if I like lie on the stage at some point, that is not out of character, I'm not dead. Don't worry, I will still be talking. It is very hard to get me to shut up. My friends know that. <laughs> Don't listen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I talk a lot. Uh, now, my first MAGFest, this is not my first MAGFest, um, was back in high school, actually. Uh, young enough, I was not an adult yet, so I got the fun little space cadet badge that they give to minors. Um, and I didn't know what was going on, but there were a lot of people doing a lot of cool things. And that's inspiring, right? Like you want to see people succeed at their dreams, make really cool stuff that other people get to enjoy, whether it's for a living or if it's even for free on the internet. There are a ton of people who do really cool stuff on the internet for no profit whatsoever, and I think that's kind of baller. Like, in perspective, that's great. Um, I am forceful, I'm restraining myself from going on a tangent about this. Uh, which is why people don't give me the mic that often. This is entirely incidental. Look what you've done, Ali. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you should be. Anyways, <sighs> yeah. We're talking about the struggle of actually starting something new, seeing something through, and actually getting to the finish line, reaping, you know, the results of your work. There's a lot of different directions I could go off in here, but I am facing a very devastating case of choice paralysis. Let me, let me hear from, from y'all actually for a second. Do you want to hear about art or do you want to hear about music? Music? Oh boy. That is actually worse because I am not as experienced in music as I am art. Granted, amateur at both, but shh, it's fine. Um, Magfest as we all know, is the music and gaming festival. We've got, there's like live concerts, there's producers and composers and singers showing their craft. It's a really great environment if you want to learn about music. Uh, of course, it only happens once a year, so for the other 361 days, uh, it's kind of hard to get anywhere, really. A lot of my time with composing tends to look at me opening up a new project file that's completely empty, poking around like with two instruments, making a melody and going, wow, that is hot garbage. Um, and I mean, every so often, sure, you get a spark, you figure out how to tie together a track and pull it through to the finish. I did that two days before MAGFest actually, which was really fun. Uh, also, I was not working on the music for this panel, so that's less fun. <laughs> Now, I don't know if I have a point, actually. Um, I don't know if I had one in the first place. I don't look at me like that. Listen. Okay. I'm going to ask you to sit back down at the computer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got words for me, don't you? I don't have words for you. I have words for the audience. I want to ask, to the people who are remaining here, when I looked like I was giving up and I sat back down, would you have considered this panel anything of a disaster? No? That's actually a surprise. I will say that this panel has not gone anything like I expected it to. And that's kind of the point. Who am I? I'm me, yeah. But to, to you guys, who am I? I'm a kid, maybe fresh out of high school, who walked on stage, grabbed a mic, just kind of started riffing. It's been kind of weird, and you've been watching people walk out those doors just a lot. But 
everybody in this room stayed here even when some of you were falling asleep. I want to thank you for that because I'm going to wrap this back around to the point that I made before I sat down. If you have a story to tell, I want you to tell it. You all stayed here despite me being at my lowest and having to hand off the panel to my friend here. Even as he kind of talked down about himself, about his work. He has released albums made by, uh, with music tracks made by him and our friends. He makes really good music and I'm there to listen to it and so are all of my friends. And you guys, no matter the quality of this panel, sat down here and decided to dedicate your time to watching me put on a silly little show. And if you guys were able to stay here and sit through all of this, thank you. You have proven my point. If you have a story you want to tell, tell it. There will be somebody who will listen. If you want to get up here and do a panel on your own, plan it a little bit first. I'm, I'm going to be honest. A lot of this was due to me not planning anything. But if you want to do something, you should do it. If you want to learn anything, go out and learn it. If you want to put on a show and do a show, do it. If you want to make your own panel and your own presentation, go watch theirs first. They actually have an entire presentation. It's happening tomorrow in this room at about the same time. Uh, do it. Not the, not the going to their panel. Work on your own panel, but also go to their panel. You should go to their panel, please. <laughs> it's really hard for me to be up here, and it's really hard for me to actually get ready for being up here. I was fully expecting this to be a solo act. I had points that I wanted to make, and I made them. And that's what's important. Hit the points that you want to make. Tell your story. Hear people out. I want you to be able to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I have a story I want to tell. I want you to go out with your friends, look at them, and I want you to say, hey, let me tell you a story. I want you to go out and find people who you've never spoken to, learn who they are, appreciate them, appreciate your time here, and tell them, I want to tell you a story. I want to stand here and look out over all of you and say that I want to tell you a story. Can I tell you a story? I came to MAGFest today. Thank you so much. I am going to be wrapping this up early. I'm so sorry. No, I have nothing left, dude. Yeah, the point's been made. Thank you all so much for coming. It's been awesome being up here. You guys are wonderful. Can we get a round of applause so I don't feel like I'm... Thank you. You guys are awesome. Enjoy the rest of your MAGFest, yeah? Stage fright, that's fair. Yeah, um, we do technically still have half an hour. Uh, we finished what we planned in very heavy air quotes. We're just gonna talk for the next half hour. Uh, if you wanna leave, you can leave. If you, there's a it, lot of stuff to see. This is Get just out there and go see it. Go have a better time. I know that the Neopets panel is happening right now. I was very worried about contending with that. Uh, I was actually very interested in going to that, but I still have half an hour to fill. Yippee! Yay! Yep. Good catch. Thank you. <laughs> yeah? Did I just tell you to get things to be good? It, it. I was 63 when I was told that I was ADHD. Yeah. Oh. It, doesn't, it doesn't get easier. You just get tougher. <laughs> hey, yep. My body is just all unfinished symphony. Yeah. Gorgeous. For one reason or another, you can't finish. Yeah. This was very hard for me to finish. I was actually... The reason why, I, I know, I know. The reason why I had to sit down was actually uh, because when I ran out of steam and I ran out of things to say, but also because I started feeling very nauseous. Uh, so seriously, thank you all for coming to this. This was awesome. You guys made it really enjoyable. Uh,
It's been a blast. It's been really fun. But uh, again, point's been made. We're just going to talk up here now. Yeah. Uh, I am sweating. When you told me to get up, I was like, you oh, <laughs> I thought you were like half joking about this. No, I, I came underprepared and well, that's my own fault. I, In your defense, my usual justification for doing things is it would be really funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of things that I do are for that too. I find that a lot of the uh, the littler things that I finish, I don't really consider projects, are shit posts. <laughs> uh, just silly little images or animations. I made an animation where I cut out, uh, I cut out like a, a vine right. for a friend and put it into a GIF. I, I cut out a person flopping onto a bed. Uh, and I stitch it together with that one scene from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air where uh, an explosion happens up on the stairs and somebody gets flung down uh, and I made it so that they perfectly landed on the bed and then the person on the bed bounces so it looks like they landed on the bed. It was really fun. Uh, I was I able to finish that. <laughs> <laughs> I think actually... Now, see, this is going to sound weird, but I think that's a solution, is making... Just tiny little things. Be, be funny about your work, I guess is what I'm saying, right? Like... Do you mind if I go on a tangent here? Am Do I you mind if I say something first? Yeah, go for it. It's possible to care too much. This is true. I often care way too much about my work. And uh, I find it easier to do things if I don't care enough about it. Because I do care a little bit about the things that even I find funny. I, I find it, I care enough about it to actually do it. Right. But the things that I actually care about, the things that I have passion for, I just don't end up doing because I don't live up to my expectations. Yeah, I feel that. You, I had, mean, you had a tangent to go on. Go for right. it. Right. I was going to say, like, making stuff that's unserious is an interesting conundrum because you want to care about your work, right? Like, that's mind. coming from the heart. That's yeah. why no, that's we generally create in general. That's a lot of generals. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I recently started with music making very, very short clips. Six seconds maybe even like three seconds. As long as it sounded cool, I was happy with it. And they did sound really cool, to be fair. The ones that, that you sent to me current day are really cool, to be fair. I would argue with you about this, you but You get also my head bopping without consent. Listen. <laughs> no. Anyway, go on. Well, yeah. I mean, part of the struggle with this and why I kind of chose to take a new Thank approach <laughs> uh, was not necessarily voluntary. Um, a couple months back, I had an external hard drive that I stored all of my creative work on since, honestly, college. And I remember Freshman that year being, of college. It's been five years. I remember that being a very disastrous event for you. Yes. When, if, you've, if you're listening to me saying, oh, I put all of my work on one hard drive, you should be sweating bullets right now. <laughs> you know anything about computers, you'd be sweating bullets right then and yeah. there. <laughs> now, I may have dropped the hard drive on a hardwood floor, and it may have broken the reader arm, and I found out that it would cost me $2,000 to get all of my hard-earned work from five years back. So I started over, pretty much. I had an entirely new uh, audio workstation. Uh, I did not make anything for two months straight. Did you, did you lose all of the data or were you able to recover it? I don't remember. I was not able to recover it. I still haven't recovered it. And you're still making bangers. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think part of what drove me to actually try a new approach in the first place, have either the confidence or the stupidity to do so, either or, is I was starting from ze ground zero pretty much. Like, there was nothing else I could do other than move forward and just rebuild. Yeah. I didn't have any of my work in progress stuff. I had a collaboration that I was really looking forward to. I collected voice clips from a bunch of friends in this one game community that I'm super passionate about. And oops, I lost all the samples. <laughs> I I didn't lose the data that I'm about to talk about, but I had a very similar story where in high school I wanted to make a uh, oh visual novel about uh, a deity who lives at the edge of the world. Uh, past the edge of consciousness, uh, who meets somebody with amnesia in basically limbo, and they take on the face of whoever was the most important to them. I had a thing where I wanted to like put my friends into the game, and I collected all of these uh, names for people who would be in the game, uh, and then I lost that list. 
And it's really funny because that's not the only time that I lost a list of people that I wanted to uh, include in something. Uh, senior capstone project, the, for the people who are still here from when my panel started, uh, I collected emails from people wandering around, uh, teachers, parents, anybody who thought it was cool. I got one email, I lost it. Uh, I think about a week after the Senior Capstone project happened, and it's not because I didn't care, it's one of those things where I cared too much, fell out of it, and then lost track. It happens. Yeah. It's real. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot that I've honestly forgotten. I'm pretty sure there's... Oh, bless you. Bless you. I think there are things I'm forgetting right now, actually, but I mean, if I've forgotten, then I'm not going to worry about it. Yeah, go for it. Do you want, do you want to come up hey, here and take on. the microphone? Grab a mic. I don't know if this microphone is working. If this is okay with you. It's improv at this point. It's always been improv. Entirely fair. And also, please don't. Uh, you have a question? If, you, if, you have, if this is just a question, you can. Oh, is it? So, so my it's question is... um. So I, I'm a programmer by trade. Um, hey, same. In, nice. Uh, and I, I have like a lot of like crazy ideas that I get really excited about with game development. And then I like get into it and I program these mechanics and I'm really excited about it. And then, you know, two, three weeks in a month. Tapers off. It, well, it tapers off and it's like, I like, oh, I, I don't know art. I'm like not really good at 3D modeling and like free assets just don't cover it. And so I'm, I'm just in wondering. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Yeah. Do you have any like potential... Um, I get recommendations, I guess, but like, like, what do you do in those situations? Like, do you just... There is a thing called programmer art. Right. But that's not as It's not enough, is it? It's, it's not as satisfying. Yeah. Because what happens with the development and making stuff is that the time that you put into it is not proportional to the time that people get out of it. And that includes right. you. The time that you put into it is not proportional to the time you get out of it. It's... It's a rough cycle. Yeah, it's it, very rough. <laughs> it sucks. Uh, the you have a question. <laughs> like if you had a, if you had a squad of people working for you on a game, one well, with you. Well, and so I I actually work in game development. Like I mean, professionally is like maybe a little bit of a strong word, but I I pay the bills with game development. And those projects I can do, but when I'm trying to work on with like friends, with you know groups of, of colleagues, like there's there's just something about it, like the the it's the only way you can get stuff done. Yeah, the only way it's like if someone else had this crazy idea that then they're like, hey, I put this team together. Here's the thing. Can you program this stuff for me, and then I can do that. Yeah. But if I'm like, I've got this crazy idea. I know an art guy. I know another programmer. Like. I found this cool music online. Like, oh, I you have people talking to you who are idea guys? Uh-oh. Well, no, not, not like idea. Like, I do a lot of programming. I'm not an idea guy. But like, no, I know that you're not. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just saying you talk oh, to people. Oh, fair. oh no. That's always I, I was there once. <laughs> fair. But no, I, what, what's, your, what's your question I should ask? Just, just like kind of how do you keep that cohesiveness in a more indie setting where it's like you and a group of like friends or colleagues, like, like how do you maintain that excitement about it when there's not someone else like breathing down your neck if you will like hey like I've gotten this 3D art done like can you make this feature by next week when there's like, not somebody breathing down your neck about it it's very difficult fair I, <laughs> you're telling me you need a rock is what you need not just a boss you need a rock somebody who will like keep you on track somebody mm -hmm. who will make uh, alarms to go off mm -hmm. uh, to remind you of things like I have an alarm to help my boyfriend take his medication because right. Again, ADHD, we always forget. Fair. I have an alarm for myself to take my estrogen uh, every Saturday, which is something I'm gonna be able to do on site here in my hotel room, which is a weird thought now that I think of it. But my point is, you need somebody to keep you going. Mm. The issue with being lost is you need to find your way back again, and if you can't do that by yourself, you need friends. You need somebody who will breathe down your neck, so to speak. I'm not saying that you should get a boss right. because you're in game development, indie dev. The point's kind of, you're, you right. are your boss. It's a passion project. It's a passion project. And it's really disappointing when you can't hold on to that passion yourself, mm -hmm. which is why you need somebody else. I have <clears throat> friends, specifically. 
You have a really good anecdote about this. Can, are you able to hold on to it? Thank you. Uh, I actually worked with this guy on, I think, two game projects that are kind of technically the same game project that just fell through both times because either things came up or we both forgot about it. But it was going to be set in his own uh, comic universe. I'm not going to get into details. I know more than I should. But it was going to basically be uh, a multiversal shopping mall that you can walk around in and talk to the characters in and like do quests and mini games and stuff. And it was really cool on paper. But we both have issues with keeping that executive function where he was able to make some art assets for it, like placeholder dummy assets for it. I was able to code maybe 0.1% of it. <laughs> and communication died down, he had other stuff to work on and we just kind of left it to the wayside because we didn't have a rock. We didn't have alarms to keep us going. We, I either forgot to set them, I keep forgetting to set them, or anything happens. Always. Every time. But if you need somebody who will remind you and keep your passion going, I would recommend getting a friend who doesn't have the same issues as you. Right. <laughs> Pay so someone so even. Almost, almost like a like a life coach, like a hype man, kind hype of? man, like a deadline. There's guy, there's a lot of like hype. Yeah. Somebody, like, yeah. There's a lot of terms for it, but if you can just find somebody reliable, somebody who will remind you, that's what you would want to do. Mm. And now I remember you said that you have an anecdote about this. Would you like to? So, oh. This is our friend Claire, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Hi, hi. Um, I'm. I'm being an audio nerd real quick. Hang on. Audio um, nerd is helping yeah. me. I've not talked into a mic yet. Condenser mic. You're going to talk into yeah. the top of the mic. Instead of the floor. Like this. Yeah, I know oh, that. that's significantly better. Okay. <laughs> um, so, I am a programmer by trade. I'm still in school for it, and uh, doing a lot of cool projects with it. Uh, one of those cool projects is a game that I'm working on with a few friends, one of which is on stage right now, um, <laughs> which is a educational game about uh, wetlands management and classification. And we were doing this project because of a few months ago in October, it uh, came through that there is this opportunity at our college for a hackathon, which uh, to those who are uninitiated, it, it's like a uh, short sprint of putting together whatever you can to solve a problem. Do we have anybody who's participated in hackathons before? I see I one, have, yeah. two, three hands. A few <laughs> hands. <laughs> and a really good environment for pushing you to do stuff. <laughs> to get your project rolling, get it done, get it worked on. Um, we had a writer on our team, we had an artist on our team, and music designer. Um, and this was, a f this was a little after you had lost all of your projects. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Learning FL Studio from scratch. Yikes. So if you know FL Studio, uh, and you had experience between that and other digital audio workstations, it's kind of a trip. You should not be able to put MIDI files and audio clips on the same track. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's cursed. Also, just as a reminder to people who, uh, or more of just a refresher for people who uh, walked in, because I did see a new, a few new faces. Uh, the improv, the improvisational section is over. We're just really winging up here. We're just having a conversation. We're just talking. Thank you for everybody <laughs> who's staying and decided that this was worth their time. I, I really appreciate you. Uh, yeah, you can find episode one of our podcast on uh, Nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> Go for it. So we were working on this project. Um, got the assets done really early. Got all the writing done, all the research done. And it was up to me to get through the programming of it. And I really wanted to finish this project. I was really excited for it. I was hyped for it. I had my friends pushing me and pushing me and pushing me to do it. And 36 hours of development later, it was done the minute that the hackathon ended. <laughs> right. And it wasn't the full project that we had planned. It was a vertical slice. But that vertical slice was demonstrative enough in order to get us a second place in 
uh, our track, which was the beginner track. And that was really exciting. And we sat down and we said, we're going to take this and we're going to make it real. We're going to finish developing it. And it is currently January. <laughs> and I've worked a little bit on the dialogue system. <laughs> Next month. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I've realized throughout that process is that uh, throughout our setbacks, um, which uh, one laptop a little bit before the event went, uh, during the event, my laptop got fried. Uh, we had another laptop uh, that we were able to back up the files on and finish the project on. Um, Throughout all of that, even with the setbacks, we got more progress done than when there wasn't that driving force. And that driving force isn't something that you can just wait around <laughs> for and hope is going to launch into your life and be there to point a finger at you. It's something that you have to point a finger back at yourself. And uh, again, you can get someone to do that for you can get someone to help you with that. It's not something that is uh, solely your responsibility, but it is something that you have to grapple with and you have to bite the bullet on if you ever want to get <coughs> stuff to that completed state, which I'm mentioning one project here. Um, I assure you, like the other people on stage, I have about 20 other projects <laughs> that are unfinished. <laughs> so. It preaching to myself as I am to everyone else in this room. Um, it's a learning progress uh, process and one that I'm in the progress of count <laughs> encountering myself. So uh, does that help? Yeah, I think it, like it does. It just seems like it's kind of a, you know, like I said, learning process, just having kind of that drive to yeah. keep going forward. And if, if that drive comes from other people, it sounds like that's okay. And just accepting that that is the reality. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're all taking turns on the mic. Just that we're not blocking each other. Nightmare mic rotation, by the way. Good job, everyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, I think pushing is a very good point. You need some sort of driving force to you know, push you forward. But I think as much as you push, you also kind of have to pull yourself along. Kind of think of the carrot and the stick, right? The stick is, you know, t like you can have stuff like time deadlines with the hackathon have other people, outside forces, pushing you forwards. I also think there's some merit in, you know, giving yourself a little treat, a reward. I, when I w was in college, and by the way, I did not go to college for art or music. I went to college for environmental resource management, which meant I looked at trees and bugs for a grade. Uh, when, my t when I said I had 40 bugs due by the end of the semester, I was not lying. I did not make that quota, by the way. Whoops. Um, <laughs> My point here, there were a lot of field labs that were hard, strenuous. Maybe not in the same way that like a 36 hour programming stint might be or trying to find a bug that's just been eluding you for hours. Which is also something that happened tonight. We had, did have that happen tonight. <laughs> it was something. Again, by the way, to my good friend up here in the front seat. Hey. Um, either way, it's a challenge. And at the end of that challenge, when you've gotten over that hump, Whenever I finished the field lab, I got myself a smoothie. It was peach, it had orange and banana in it. It was very tasty. Uh, also a lot of sugar, so probably not that healthy, honestly. But again, it's a tree. Sometimes, as much as you have to push yourself or if other people push you, you kind of also have to you know, entice yourself, incentivize yourself, and give yourself a little treat. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, it's some parts push, some parts pull. You gotta figure out a balance for it, but right. yeah, with some time, you'll figure it out. These are all things that I've heard rep repeated to me like thousands of times before, and that I've repeated to other people thousands of times before. My mom was actually explicitly the one who gave me the treat yourself every once in a while advice. Um, it's not gonna help, what I'm about to say, because everybody's gonna tell you this. But don't give up. It's not a thing that you do where you don't give up. You don't try to not give up. You just decide to give up not. It, 
it, it's weird, right? I, I'm saying words, they're, they're kind of making sense to you. Right. It, it's, it's not an action that you take, it's an action that you don't take. Mm. Where if you fall, you get back up. You have projects that you remember. I say, if you can, find them again. Read through, it might take you a day, but get back up on that horse. Because I want to point out, we up here just kind of went through, I feel like the three stages of a project. This is something that I kind of realized when my two good friends were talking here, where I was up here to start with, I was having the time of my life, and then my face got hot, and I saw people getting up, and I saw people falling asleep, and I started to feel nauseous. I thought, maybe I was doing something wrong. So I handed my microphone off to my good friend CV over here, explicitly because I remembered him talking to me in the hotel room about wanting to go off on a Netflix documentary that he didn't actually bring up in the end, which is fine. It happens. Again, sometimes plans turn out different. But I handed off this project on the stage here, ready to give up, and I sat down, and I let my friend CV do his thing. And when my stomach calmed down a little bit, and I felt like I was ready to go back up, I motioned to you to give me the microphone back. I made one final point, and I felt like I had said all that I needed to say, and that it was time to wrap it up, but I, I don't think I was done. And that turned into something that I hadn't really expected, where this time up on stage here, talking to you all in the audience, uh, thank you to our very, participant very here. Yeah. yeah, but our, ti our time up here, it turned into something that wasn't just me in the spotlight to something that was less serious, something that I didn't take as seriously, something that was me and my friends included. I feel like this panel right here was the perfect epitome of a project that fell apart and kind of dragged itself back together at the end. Because I had my friends here. This is normally where the audience would go, aw, but I get it. <laughs> we are all very tired. It's a little late for an aw. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, I lost track of the time again. <laughs> this is what projects should be, where if you don't feel like you're up to something, I'm not saying to hand it off to somebody else. I'm saying to go to somebody else for help. And if that somebody else that you go to for help turns into a group that you go to for help, to a group that's helping you do that project, is there any shame in that? Proposing a question to the audience. Audience participation? No. There's no shame to that. And that's something that I have to internalize within myself. I said somewhere around the middle of this panel that this was supposed to be a wake-up call for me. Maybe it was because you don't really tell in the moment. Maybe something unlocked in me when I was embarrassed and feeling nauseous sitting down. Maybe something unlocked in me when I got up and started going at it again. Maybe something unlocked in me when I had the realization that this is what a project should be. Maybe. I hope so. I really want to finish projects. I really want to be functional. I want to keep fighting. And I want to tell you a story. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. I really appreciated your time here. Thank you. And thank you for coming up on stage.